So who remembers this guy from our last episode? Yep, there he is, prattling away, talking about all the great jobs that he's going to get this summer. Will he go to San Pauli? Will he go to Red Star Paris? Is he going to jump in at Slovenian side Maribor and win them the title? Not a bit of it. There was almost no interest in our services this summer at all. Almost no interest. But there was one club. We're making the journey from Croatia to Slovakia and the town of Zjarnjad Renom, the home of top flight club FK Peronia, where we've landed a job with a fully professional club with a compact but modern 2300 capacity stadium named after the town. Last season saw Peronia finish 10th in the 12 team top division and avoid relegation on goal difference. The press conference to announce our appointment was concerning with one of the coaches looking at the ground the whole time and the director of football looking distinctly unimpressed by the team the chairman had appointed. The playing squad were equally underwhelmed and we're going to have an uphill struggle to achieve our ninth place prediction. So welcome to Peronia, everybody. Are we pleased to be here? Well, after the summer we've had, you bet we are. It was a barren wasteland of job opportunities. Maybe one season or one club makes us just too raw to even get offers at third tier clubs in some of the big leagues. We'd almost given up hope of getting a job at a club bigger than the one we were leaving in Dugapolia. The only offers of interviews we were getting were in Welsh second division sides, Scottish fourth tier sides. I think there was one from Northern Ireland in their third tier as well. Everybody else was laughing us out of town, not even getting to the interview stage. And then FK Pironier came in and offered us an interview. They only stayed up by the skin of their teeth last season. They were almost relegated out of the Slovakian top flight. They either stayed up on goal difference or their results against the team that was below them, but they are a top division club for this season, and we've jumped in and taken charge of them. The big step up is that they are a professional club Whereas at Dugapolia, we were only a part-time outfit. So that's good news. The other good news is that they are pretty realistic in their ambitions. In our season in charge, they only want us to avoid relegation. So if we could get a mid-table finish, that would be a pretty decent return. We've signed a one-year deal with them and we've got £750 a week. That's a step up from £525 a week when we were at Duga Polia. So that is a good start. In terms of the facilities that they've gone, well, they are reasonable, I suppose. We've got average training facilities, below average youth facilities, but that's of little consequence to us. And we've got average academy coaching and fairly basic youth recruitment. And I can tell you there was very little that came through in their previous youth intake that is going to be featuring anywhere near even our bench this year. So we're going to have to try and build a tactic out of what we inherited. Let's show you what we inherited and let's get building that tactic. Let's introduce you to tactical problem number one. This is Cedric Badolo, in my opinion, our best player. He's quick, he's agile, he gets good delivery into the box, he can pass a ball as well. I thought this was the guy that we could make an attacking tactic out of. Maybe as a right winger, although on further inspection, when I found out that we had no right backs at the club because last year's lone right back returned to his parent club and our backup right back refused to sign a new contract and left on a free. So I thought maybe as a right wing back, Cedric might be overlapping down the right and would be our star man. The only problem with my strategy was, on closer inspection, rather than being on loan at Sheriff Tiraspol for a year, it turned out that he was actually on loan for 18 months and isn't returning to Peronia until the 31st of December. So he's not available for us to use in the first half of our season and we can't recall him from that loan. So our best player is not going to be featuring for us until the halfway point in the season. It meant that we had to try and make a tactic out of the other players that we've got at the club. It was a tricky situation to make a tactic without a right back this is what I think we've come up with. We've got some decent players. I think with our right back being out on loan, Badolo, this is probably the best of them. This is Martin Crean, who's got a cap for the national team. He scored on that occasion. 
and I think all round he's a pretty decent player. He can play in any of these central midfield roles. I think we're going to play him as a central midfielder. I think, given some of the other limitations we've got in midfield, where all of our central midfielders seem to want to be quite attacking in nature, even though he is supposedly most suited to being a Mazala or an advanced playmaker, I think as a deep line playmaker is the role that we're going to use him in to try and create a little bit of cover for the defence. I think maybe even on a defend duty. We've also got three decent centre-backs at the club. One of them could also double up as being a target man. This is six foot six inch Ahmed Fafana. Now he can't finish. His composure is woeful. He's not a great central defender either, if I'm honest. He can't mark and his tackling's not great. But physically, he is incredibly good. We could use him as a target man. But given some of the other limitations that we've got in the side, I'm actually thinking that it might be better to play a back three rather than play a back four and instead incorporate wing backs to try and get around the fact that we don't have anybody that can play as a right back for us. I'm thinking Fafana might actually be in the middle of our three and given his prowess in the air, we might even put him as a stopper, get him pushing into these little areas in front of our defence to try and win some ball for us because we've got two other good central defenders as well. This is Stelios Kokobas who was on loan at the club last season. I extended his loan. I'm not going to allow myself to sign any new loan players, but I did renew all the contracts of people who were expiring that would agree to negotiate. And I bought two players that were on loan last season back in, Stelios being one of them. He's a left-footed centre-back, which is good, as we've only got three centre-backs at the squad. And I think he'll fit in nicely as part of this back three. And the other player that could play in the back three is another player that the coaches rate pretty highly. This is Adam Payer, who is perhaps not as strong as the other centre-half, but has got pretty decent tackling, good marking. Some of the mentals are there. The composure is a little bit low, but he's certainly pretty quick back there. And between the three of them, I think they've got good stability, good aerial prowess, pretty pacey as well. As a back three... I'm thinking that looks pretty good. The other players that the coaches are a big fan of is Yaroslav Mihailik. Reasonably quick, reasonable crossing, reasonable dribbling, bit of an all-rounder, crucially two-footed, cuts inside from both wings as well, which is why I'm thinking we might be better off playing with inverted wingers in this system and maybe playing this three-pronged attack with a back three as well. As a two-footed player, Mihaly could be the inverted winger over on the right or over on the left. I think we'll keep him over on this side for now. Could be an inside forward. I think we're going to go for the inverted winger. And now we're getting the semblance of shape for our side. Left back is reasonably simple to pick. We've got a couple of options, but this I think is the best of them. It's the quickest. It's got okay dribbling and crossing as a wing back. I'd like it to be a little bit higher, but I think as a wing back on support, certainly Simchat can do a job for us. And then we've also got a reasonably simple decision to make in goal as well. This is the best of our keepers, Patrick Lejiang, who is a pretty decent all-rounder. I love that agility of 15, by the way. Aerial reach is pretty good for someone that's only six foot one as well. So now we've got a back three done. We've got our goalie picked, our left back picked. And I still think we've got some decent options for these positions over here. Starting with Adler De Silva, another player that was out on loan last season at Slovan Bratislava. Got a little bit of game time, mainly from the bench. I think this Swiss player could be a decent option for us. Could play as a centre forward for us and has scored five goals during pre-season. Could also play over on the left as a right footer. Again, maybe cutting in, likes to run with that ball, dribbling of 12. So if we got Adler into the side as well, maybe we could have inverted wingers, a role that works pretty well, I think, in FM22 and certainly worked for us over on this side at Dugapolia. And now we've got a bit of a team starting to shape up. We've got this problem where we don't have a right wing back. But we could play Timotej Zhehemenski there, who is left-footed, but maybe could play over on this side as an inverted wing-back. 
coming and sitting in in the central midfield roles. Physically, he looks pretty decent. Technically, there are some gaps. I think that's the role that if he plays, he could certainly fill in at as an inverted wing back, maybe on support. And maybe if we move Crean over to the other side, then we could have the inverted wing back coming and sitting in the midfield here. And this player maybe could go and do something a little bit more exciting up front. However, I do think we have a better option for that role than Zuhamensky. And we're going to blame my mate FM Stinger for this because he's released a video over on his channel about how you might use players that don't actually know the role to fill in on different parts of the pitch if you think they've got the attributes for it. And I think Philip Hasek probably has the attributes to come and play as a right wing back. Reasonably quick, good tackler, marking is fine, can actually pass and create a little bit, probably better than he can do as a central midfielder. But I think we could possibly turn him into an auxiliary right back. Now, he could be a more conventional wing back, I guess, seeing as he's right footed. But I do like the idea of continuing with a central midfielder that's going to be a really attacking option like we had at Dugapolia. So I'm quite happy for Hasek to move into these little areas here, play in central midfield alongside Crean when we've got the ball, and then drop back to these more defensively wide positions when we are defending, which means that we've got a player needed in central midfield. And the player that I think we're going to go for is this little chap down here. This is Dan Osvaldo, who scored three goals in pre-season. And I only gave him one start. I've been chopping and changing formations all through pre-season, trying to find something that will work. Osvaldo, going forward, is good. He's really quick. He's naturally very fit. His passing and his vision are an absolute delight. The flair is pretty decent as well. Defensively, as part of a two-man midfield, you would have concerns. But I think if we play him in this little role, considering we've got an inverted wing back cutting in and we've got an inverted winger cutting in, maybe Osvaldo could play his preferred role as a Mazala on attack and perhaps pop up in these wide areas here and do a little bit of damage for us, which means the only role we're looking to fill is a striker. And for that, I think we're going to turn to a veteran in the shape of Milos Lachny who is 34 years old, is described as well-travelled, for a man of his vintage, not terrible physically, holds up a good end mentally, can definitely finish, could be a poacher, although I'm thinking of a different kind of role. Maybe at his age, a deep-lying forward could be nice. Maybe a false nine. I'm not sold on that. That might mean that we don't have enough impetus dashing into the box when we've got chances. And I'm thinking this is our tactical system, at least for today's game. We are starting with arguably the toughest fixture that we could have been handed. Let's get out there against Slovan Bratislava. But let's start with the scout report. Bratislava is home to Slovakia's most successful club, Slovan, the winners of a European competition in 1969. Vladimir Vice's side were champions last season, the club's 12th title in total. And look out for former Aston Villa player Andre Green as Slovan Bratislava take on FK Peronia in the season opener. Clearly this is going to be a tough opening game for us, but we need a good season here at Peronia. We need to try and exceed expectations essentially. This looks like a club that should go down. If we can get them into mid-table, I think that would be a good result, but this is going to be an incredibly difficult opening game. The other thing that we should, of course, mention is that we did get a coaching badge as part of this contract offer as well. So we are now studying for our national A license. That should help give us a bit of reputation boost, but we could do with a good finish in the league as well. Whether we've stumbled upon the tactic that's going to get us there, I am not convinced. I actually think that our opponents today are lining up in the same shape. We struggled to come up with a tactic that got us through pre-season. I was redesigning things at half-time, essentially not having any right-backs at the club, only having three centre-halves. That was a good chance for the Mazala, by the way. And also, having a squad where everybody wanted to be a wide player, but cutting inside gave us very little options. 
I think I've been through every single option that we had. And you know what? We've not made a terrible start to this game, so I might just encourage the players that given the, the restrictive nature of the squad, I think we're going to give this 5-2-3 a go. It's a formation that I do like the shape of, but it's going to rely on the inverted wingers getting goals for us. The first half has gone pretty well, I'm going to say. We're going to need a little bit more out of them in the second half. If we could snag a goal here, I'd even settle for a point right now. It's going to be a pretty decent start to the campaign. Okay, keep an eye on some of these performances out here. We've got Hashek as our experimental right wing back on a 6.4. That doesn't look like it's working. We've also got our striker on a 6.5. We could swap him with Adler De Silva because I think De Silva is a decent striking option as well. And we've got other players that could come in and play over on that left-hand side. So we might just keep an eye on that around about 60 minutes. I might freshen things up a little bit. Will we still be in the game on 60 minutes though? Straight after half time, Slovan are coming at us. Got a pretty decent defensive shape, although there's a lot of space out here, isn't there? Finally, our left wing back gets out there. Stop the delivery coming in. You've not stopped the delivery coming in. And we have been made to pay for that, haven't we? I was almost calling get a second or two before it happened. Too much space for the... The right winger over on this side didn't stop the delivery coming in. And even though we've got a six foot six centre half, he's gone way over his head. It's knocked down and fired home. And we need a little bit more from the players. We're going to demand more because we've looked pretty reasonable. Certainly, we've not conceded too many chances, but now we've got to go out and score a goal. There's the Mazala. That's the second time that he's popped up in space. It's also the second time that he has blazed a shot over the bar. Delivery. We're going to pause on 60. I think there's some changes afoot. And I think they're going to be attacking ones. Try and get back into this game. Okay, so this is what we're going for then. We're moving De Silva up front. He's going to become an advanced forward. We've shunted Mihailik out to the left. And we've brought on a sub, Ladislav Music, to see whether he can strike some of the right notes for us. Music can consider himself a little bit unlucky not to have got picked today because he was in good form during pre-season. But I decided to go with Adler as the left winger instead. I've shuffled things around now, and if we could get an equaliser and draw 1-1 with Slovan Bratislava, I'm going to say that's a good first afternoon in charge of Peronia. We've got Hasek. He's got it through to De Silva. He's moved up front, and that's the first time he has looked threatening. Unfortunately, their goalie was equal to the task. But we have got a corner coming into the box. It's fortunately, it's headed clear. And I think, I think we're almost worthy of an equaliser. You know, we've got a couple more changes that we can make. Maybe we're going to go a little bit more attacking. Ten minutes. Try and find a goal. Okay, couple of fresh faces on, including a new striker. But we need somebody that's just going to get on the end of the chance and equalise for us. But build up play like that is not going to cut it, is it? We thump the ball forward try to chase it down. Instead, we've just given possession to Slovan Bratislava and we've got to win it back all over again. I've also made a little change in midfield as well. I've moved our right wing back into central midfield, bought that other inverted wing back option on just to well, try and give us a little bit something different in midfield for the final few minutes. Is this going to be a red card? I fear it could be. It is. It's Hasek, the right wing back. I've moved into central midfield. He's moved into that area, kicked somebody, and now we've got some reshuffling to do. Okay, we've flung the big man up front. We've gone with like a 2-5-2 formation. But the game has petered out into a 1-0 defeat. I think that's probably the best team we're going to play this season. I think they're going to be challenging for the title. And they've not made us look foolish, I would say. And we've created some chances against them. Certainly, we've had as many shots on target. We've had a reasonable XG compared to theirs. We just got undone by that one chance. It means that we've now got to go away. Maybe have a little think about tweaking that tactic. Although the shape of it, I'm thinking, might stay the same. But by the time you come back, we'll have got our first few games as Peronia boss under our belts. And we'll see where we're sitting in the league.